What's up guys, in today's video I'm going to show you three tricks that I use to make my kick and bass cut through the mix better on pop records. We'll be working on the song I did with my buddy Trip Carter. Before we do get started, please make sure to like and subscribe. Let's go. All right guys, so what we're working with is a, what they call a bouncy bass. It's kind of 808 sound and then a kick. Um, I'm gonna play for you what it was like before I got it and then with the plugins on and then I'll break down what I was doing in each one of the plugins. So this is before. And when, you, when I turn it on, when I turn all the plugins on, what you hear is the, the kick and bass separate more, the bass gets a bit stronger in the higher mids, and the kick's cutting through quite a bit more. So the question is, how do I achieve that and why? Well, my idea when I was mixing the song is I wanted the kick to cut through more in that section. So that was part of the reasoning of how I mixed the bass. So when you're mixing kick and bass, you always want one to be the leader. Which one's gonna be the leader, the kick or the bass? In this song, it was a kick for me, and usually it is a kick for me. That can sometimes just be a thing of taste. I'm a big fan of kicks. Some people like 808s more, so they might mix 808 more. It kind of depends, but we'll run through this so you guys can see how all this works. So the first thing I did was put a compressor on the bass. You might wonder, why did you compress the bass? It's already pretty compressed. Well, sometimes by compressing the bass, you can lose a little bit of low end, but make it feel a bit tighter. Why you lose low end is the compressor is gonna compress the loudest signal first, which is the low end on this, but that's okay. I wanted to shave off a little bit of low end and make it a little bit tighter. So here it is with the compressor on and off. Think it gets a little lower too but you hear it kind of bounces a little more and it's a little bit tighter so after doing that i put on what is called spectra now this is a eq but it's eq with saturation so you're actually saturating the the signal in whatever frequency area you want which is helpful for something like this so i wanted more mid-range out of this bass so it cuts through on smaller speakers and stuff and so i boosted that about 6 db now that might seem like a lot maybe but because there's such little signal at six at 3K on a on a bass, or actually, yeah, 3K on a bass, um, you can boost more and you'll get more. And then I boosted a little more and around 125 here, uh, just to get a little more bass out of it, but not super low bass. So let me turn this on and off so you guys can hear it. So you hear with it on, it definitely cuts through more. If you're listening to this on laptop speakers, you'll probably actually hear the bass <laughs> as opposed to you might not be able to hear it before. So definitely getting us the what we want, which is the bass to cut through, but in the higher mids, so why? The kick can take up the lower section and that's where we'll move next. So on the kick, I have one of my favorite plugins, Little Lab's Voice of God. And what this does is just add some subharmonics to it and just this setting, which is the 40 Hertz uh, is the center always just makes the kick thump a little bit more. So let me play it, let me unsolo the uh, kick, and let me just play it with this on and off. So it's automatic, you hear it, it just starts punching more. There's some sort of punch that this thing gives that I really, really like, and so that's what I had. So now that we have the bass out of the way and the lower frequencies and the kick hitting where we want it to, let's play them together. So it's coming together. Now, there's one more thing. I still needed the bass to get a little more out of the way of the kick. So I use this plugin called Laser, and it's a great plugin. And what it is, it's a side chain compressor, basically, um, but you, it, it only comes down when the side chain comes in. And you, you can hit this little red button, and it will start working, and it will find the best way for it to work. So all you do is side chain from your kick, and then side chain in here. If you're on a different program, it'll be a different way, but 
If you know anything about sidechain, it's pretty simple. And then you'll hit this red button. I'm not gonna do it because we'll mess up my settings, but you'll hit this button and it will calculate the best way for it to work. Then you can go dial in on the actual settings once it's, it's set it up. So for this, it had turned down everything negative eight, right? When the kick hits, it, it ducks it. I didn't want it to do that at the highs and mids. I just wanted to do it on the lows. So now it only ducks when the um, on the low end, not the highs and the mids. So let me now play it with that in there. You just get much more punch out of the kick, as you can hear when you turn the laser on. So one final time, let me turn everything on and off and we can hear the final results. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys to get some ideas on different ways you can move the kick and bass frequencies in order for it to fit the mix. Every song's really super different. So you always have to do this in different ways to make it work. But these are some of the tools I use in order to make that happen. Let me know what you guys use for kick and bass, what plugins you're using, what techniques in the comments below. If you need a song Mix and Master, hit me up at mixandmastermysong.com. You can also find my presets and courses there too. Talk to you soon.